guys, it's Katie here with Life Mundane and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you guys about Apologia's Exploring Creation Through Chemistry and Physics. We have been using this science book all year long and I have just been dying to tell you guys all about it. What we love about it, what things that I would adjust, tweak, or maybe some tips or tricks on utilizing this if you're gonna be teaching it in the upcoming year, and some of our favorite experiments. So, let's get started. My name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos and on this channel we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are going to help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little moments. So what ages is this curriculum best for? Well, this is part of Apologia's Young Explorer series. Any book within this series is designed for kindergarten through sixth grade. You can use them in any order and for any of those ages, you will be able to find material that is perfect for your child. That being said, I would personally put the chemistry and physics at the upper end of that. So I would typically say if you have a kindergartner or a first grader who is your oldest child and you are looking at which science to pick, I probably wouldn't start with chemistry and physics. I would probably say suggest starting with the botany program, which we have done, or with the astronomy, which I have done a video on and I will link that up in the i cards and down in the description below. However, if your kids are a little bit older, I definitely would suggest doing this one. Lots of fun hands-on experiments and we'll get into more of why I love it here in just a second. This year we did this program with two sixth graders, a fifth grader, a third grader, and then our two pre-k students tagged along for all the experiments and fun. So what do you need to complete a year of chemistry and physics? Well, the first thing you definitely need is the textbook. This is going to be your primary resource it's going to have everything you need for an entire year's worth of science. Each day you are going to read small chunks of each chapter. Each chapter is designed to take you two weeks to get through and you are going to get to read through all the different interesting things. It's broken up into small sections so that it's easy to digest. Lots of fun illustrations and pictures and science experiments along the way and this is going to be your guide for all of that. In the back, you'll find some really important resources. You'll find a supply list of every single supply that you'll need, and it will list exactly which lesson you will need it for. You will notice an answer key in the back with every question and the answer that is given in each lesson. They will have just periodic times where they'll stop and say, what do you remember? And they'll ask a few clarifying questions. Well, all of those answers are here in the back, so no worries if you don't remember, you can come back here for a quick review. Also note that at the beginning of the book, there is a few instructional pages for parents to read over to give you a few tips and tricks when it comes to teaching the curriculum, as well as a link to a special website that you only have access to when you purchase the books that will give you additional materials or information if your child wants to dig a little bit deeper into any given topic. Beyond the textbook, you are going to need materials for the science experiments. Like I said, this particular year's worth of curriculum for chemistry and physics is packed full of science experiments. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen an apology a science book with so many science experiments. So with that being said, you probably are gonna wanna pick and choose which experiments you wanna do. I like the fact that there are lots of different levels of experiments. So there are things that are very, very easy with household items that you can do for every lesson, as well as more in-depth projects, and you get to choose what you are comfortable with. And that is all you technically need to do the curriculum. They do have additional things that you can purchase. I highly recommend getting the audio CDs. We didn't used to use them a ton, but then I have become very addicted to them <laughs> in the past several years as the kids' schoolwork has gotten a lot more intense, as there is more reading for me to do. My voice gets very tired. And so you can get these MP3 CDs. So you will download them onto your computer. You can put them on an MP3 device, put them on your phone, use them on your computer, tablets, things like that. And it will read the lesson. Everything that's in the textbook is here on the CD. So it will read the lesson to your child. We use this sometimes for review of concepts or maybe if we're in the car and we need to get some science in. I also have used it before if I am sick or not feeling good where I will put it on as an audio thing and have the kids follow along in the book because the book does include so many pictures and fun things, diagrams that the kids are not going to get by just listening to the concepts. They have two additional materials that you can purchase if it works best for you and that is their journals, their student journals. You can get the regular one which is designed for 
for third grade and up, or you can get the junior one, which is designed for third grade and down. So if you have a third grader, you can kind of look at it to see, to decide which one works best for you and your family. If you do not have a child who is writing really well yet, I would personally suggest just skipping the journals. It is a lot of writing. However, if your child is writing, these are a really fun addition to many of the science curriculums. There are places in there where your child will get to journal things that they're learning and copy down different concepts um, or vocabulary words. They have copy work included as well as crossword puzzles and word searches. There's fun activity pages that you can cut out and paste to make your own books as you go. As we learn about things like renewable energy, hydropower, geothermal energy, biofuels, so on and so forth. It also gives them a place to be able to write down what they've done in the experiments, what their hypothesis is, and what actually happens. Now I will say, while I have enjoyed using the student journals in the past, I really enjoyed using it for the space unit for astronomy. I will say I we didn't use it as much this year, and that is just because there were so so many hands-on experiments. We did utilize it. We did have fun with what we have utilized so far, but we just didn't find as much time to work on it because there were so many hands-on activities. And I view that as a really, really positive thing, um, but it just depends on you and your child and what their preference is. And also, if you're already looking to include things like copy work and vocabulary and things like that, then I would definitely recommend getting the student journal because it can incorporate multiple subjects into one. So the way that this particular unit is designed, it is two topics in one. It is both chemistry and it is physics. So the first five lessons will focus on the chemistry elements. It's gonna be looking at how atoms are created, molecules, looking at the periodic table, at crystals and things like that. So some of these topics are pretty big topics that even adults can have trouble understanding, including myself. However, reading through the way that Apologia explained it was the first time that I truly started to understand some of these concepts that I've learned in school, in both high school and elementary school, and even in college. So I was very thankful for the way that they explained it. That being said, because some of these topics are a little more complex, I would highly recommend doing as many of the experiments and some of the hands-on teaching tools that they recommend in those first five lessons. After the first five lessons, you can definitely only pick and choose a little bit more so what you wanna do or what you want to wait on as it moves into the physics aspect. Physics, I feel like, is a lot easier for kids to uh, grasp because there are so many real life practical applications to it. They get to see it illustrated all throughout life. Whereas chemistry, while it's very much involved in everyday life, they don't visually see as much. In one of the first lessons, they have you making an atom. As they're talking about the different parts of an atom, they encourage you to take a paper plate and an M&M and to make this atom so the kids can really start to understand these concepts. I would highly recommend not skipping that activity as it really does help your child have a visual to connect some of these more complex topics. But don't worry if your child doesn't understand everything that's introduced. That is the beauty of this curriculum is it is so deep. It goes so deep into these different concepts and your child will learn, I promise. And there are different levels and layers for every single grade that is involved in that kindergarten through sixth grade. So your sixth grade is going to come out of it understanding more. But even my preschoolers who joined in with us on these lessons have grasped a lot of these concepts just at different levels. This will not be the only time your child goes through chemistry and physics most likely. So it's just to give them a base layer, a base understanding of how these things work, and then in future years they can build upon that. The fun thing about chemistry is there is a lot of explosions. We did so many fun science experiments having to do with explosions, as different chemicals combined and made different reactions. So that really does help bring it to life for your child. They also really love doing the litmus test as we tested the different things that had acid in them, as well as making their own lava lamps. As you move on to lesson six and move into the physics portion of the book, you're gonna start out by learning about Newton's laws of motion. And that was something that really got my kids engaged and interested. You'll also cover things like friction and energy. What are the different kinds of sustainable energy and what are the pros and cons of E? You're going to have units on sound energy and working with light and you're going to round out the year working with magnets and circuits. So there's a lot of hands-on opportunities. A couple additional things that I might recommend 
to purchase alongside this curriculum um, is to get an atom building kit. There are some really cool ones on Amazon. I will link them down below that we have utilized that really helped um, when we were talking about the periodic table and how the different things combined. This was really helpful to be able to have the kids build it themselves and really get to see that visual representation of what was on the periodic table. I also really would recommend getting like a snap circuit kit. Um, I've gotten a lot of them on garage sales in the past, but I will link a link down below where you can find them on Amazon. And that can also be a great way when you're talking about electricity and building different circuits and how you can, again, give them that hands-on experience. A couple things I wanted to highlight was how many creation confirmation sections there are in this curriculum. It is a Christian curriculum, unashamedly so, and that's one of the things that I love about it. With this Christian curriculum, they take little pockets and opportunities throughout the curriculum to share creation confirmation stories. So to say, how is this concept that you are learning about in science right now, how does this confirm that there is a God who created the world? world. My kids have absolutely loved those different pockets of information and it's been really cool how they have tied to what we're learning about in Bible. There's been multiple times that those have lined up as we're using Apologia's Who is God um, worldview curriculum. So I just love the fact that everything's come full circle. It's helped to really help my kids not only build in their knowledge of science but build in their knowledge of God as well. All in all I would give Apologia's Chemistry and Physics 10 out of 10. We've been using it for five years now and I would say this has been my kids favorite section so far. So I highly recommend it for your kiddos and we'll link links down below where you guys can find out more information about the program. You can also check out the astronomy video I did last year. You can see a look inside of the different student books, materials, more in depth in my unboxing video that I did earlier this year on the chemistry and physics. And I will link that up in the iCards and down in the description as well. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.